In political news, Michigan Republican Representative Norman Summerton boldly criticized President Trump's programs supporting American small businesses by saying, Come on, how can you trust that guy? Even his wives are imported. Well, if you wanted honesty, you've come to the wrong place. This is the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm John. And I'm Michael. Or Peter Greer. Also known as Mr. Seaman. No, no, no. Peter no, Greer. After, uh, no, after last week, I'm, I'm now Mr. Seaman. <laughs> You've all- I don't believe anyone has ever called you that, other than John. It is now your nickname in the chat. I know. I, I saw. You know. I'm well aware. No. <laughs> By the way. He's a diehard Peter Greer fan. It's copulation time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering why you're looking oh, at your look, watch. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is, in fact, that time again. Uh, there's a bad joke in there somewhere about Michael and uh, his mating habits. I just didn't want to jump there yet. What? Huh? I mean, that small child you had to just release from her bonds and, you know, escort out of your room there before we could start. Well, she didn't want her behaving irrationally uh. in his lecture. I couldn't. Mm, I couldn't think not. about it. I couldn't. I, I didn't get anything. I. I. I, I failed. You're. You're he's, off mic, Woody Allen. So mic. I'm nervous. He's dying. He's left the room. Michael is. Michael has left the session. <laughs> We've upset <laughs> everybody. Goodness gracious. Ugh, I'm I did not very, expect very, that. very upset. Michael um, doesn't care if we're being entertaining, sir, as is obvious by any of his presentations. <laughs> That is fair. Not the last one. I thought the last one was okay. Oh, yeah. Michael, your your last presentation has become my favorite, and I'm not going to say too much more on it because we, we spend a fair amount of time breaking our arms, jerking ourselves off here. Um, but it was very enjoyable. Um, I You actually made me laugh out loud when I was proving the episode. I don't remember what it was that you said, but you, you had some good ones in there. And maybe it was just the ridiculousness of just listening to urine therapy again. Um, but it was it was some fun stuff. Yeah. I mean, the last episode compared to a bracing shot of urine in the face, I will take last episode. Same. Even though the slatter is healthier. The latter. Slatter. Slatter? Uh, Shane played in that band. Yeah, the mm-hmm. slatter. For at least three years. Mm, yes. How is everyone's weeks? I'm alive. Same. I don't know how many different <laughs> shades of the tire fire I can describe at this point. Yeah, uh, did you guys see that a teaser trailer for The Stand came out? Uh, oh, that was this week. I, did, I didn't I did watch it, but I saw that, that it was posted somewhere, and I was like, oh, cool, that's pretty sweet, and then I went about my business because I was at work or something. The only reason I bring that up is because Shane, you know, s- describing different tire fires, I feel like is... The first half of the stand is just different little vignettes on how the world's falling apart. Ooh, um, good point. And when I saw that trailer with a room full of people, or room full of people, with my sister and, and Becky in the room, I was like, they Socially don't know. Socially distant, right? Uh, no, I actually just gotten done making out with my sister, and Becky was watching. That's usually how that works. Oh, you're, you're right, mm-hmm. you're right, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Uh, I was like, they have both not, and they're kind of like foot down like i'm not gonna read the stand before this comes out in december i was like that's so much time um like they have no idea the trauma that's about to come and what a weird year for it to be released at the end of oh it's it's fantastic i love it just get down on your knees and wait for the kiss of the trash can man Mm. oh joy um i'm actually looking forward to seeing uh what's her face the chick who uh can't decide what team she wants to be on whether she wants to be in Vegas or in Colorado? Yes. Oh. Uh, Nadine? Nadine. Yeah. yeah. That is my grandmother's name, by the way. My my uh, grandmother on my father's side's name was Nadine. So I have a very weird juxtaposition of hearing her getting just reamed in the ass by, you know, the worst character in that book. And Spoilers! then sitting there going... <laughs> For a book that came in the 70s. <laughs> anyway, um... Is he back? I I don't know who's fucking it up this time. I mean, you never can tell. John, this is what life was like when uh, we were dealing with your run for that full extended period of time. It's not 
I didn't want to pass the torch to anybody, but I I enjoy seeing the the different side, and I I sympathize with both uh-huh. of you for tolerating it for as long as you did. Yeah, just slaloming through the gracious and glacial speeds of my internet. <laughs> You know, it is really impressive, though. I was thinking about it earlier today that we've managed to make this work through this entire year so far doing it in this format. And the main reason that it's possible is, you know, outside of Shane's connection uh, to be able to have longer chats and Michael's uh, it's Michael's editing ability, really, because if we didn't have a good editor at this point, uh, we'd be (laughs) We wouldn't have been able to do this. So <laughs> Yes, this would yeah. be excruciating. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I decided to be brave and stupid at the same time. Gas. You're already married. I, I, I went <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I went to Alamo uh on Monday. <gasps> oh. oh no. Was What'd it you drink? Like packed lines, you know. Uh to answer the questions in the order I heard them, I drank uh a church music from the shop, which is an IPA, uh-huh. and then I had a light lager from Pedal House, and I saw the early screening of Tenet, um, which I left going, what in the fuck did I just watch? Uh, when I saw Inception for the first time, not to be like, oh, I got it, but like you, like it has a through line that you can you can feel the pulse the entire way through. You, it's mind fucky, but in a very approachable way. Tenet is very much so, Christopher Nolan is the smartest man in the room, and he's not going to stoop down to explain anything to you, so fuck you for trying. And uh, it's a good way, I think, to get him to get people to spend double the money. So, like, if you are a theater goer, you're going to be like, it's like Shane, like, finishing The Witch for the first time and then immediately restarting it. Um, The moment I left, I was like, I think I need to go see it again. I think we have noticed, if anything, he has started to inch ever so closer to being like David Lynch. Yeah. He, he's just trying to get, you know, he started out ostensibly, you know, Memento in and of itself has that kind of weird mind fuckery to it where you really have to kind of reorchestrate and reorient how you're thinking just due to the fact that we're lapsing back and forth through time. But yeah, now he's he's basically just decided like, oh no no, we're we're just gonna throw this whole thing on its ear and yeah, coherency be damned. Yeah. Um, additionally, uh, Alamo was their their protocols are pretty damn awesome. Sweet. It legitimately is the safest that I've felt in an unsafe situation since the start of COVID. I felt more comfortable and more safe there than the one time since march that becky and i sat down at a restaurant um so kudos to them i'm I'm not going to describe in great detail like what they did i'm just if if you're interested you can go to their website and they have a little adorable like 8-bit infographic on what they're doing um Hmm. but i it was a very weird experience and if it wasn't for the fact that I'm going to be dealing with the mouth-breathing public in en masse starting now, um, I probably wouldn't have gone. But it's it's hit that critical point of like, fuck it. I think Asher Asher said it when we were describing uh, or de- deciding if we were going to practice in person again uh, anytime soon. And he's like, hey, I'm going to catch this thing. My mom is going to catch this thing. So don't ask me uh, if I'm nervous to be in a room with you guys. Ask yourself if you're nervous to be in a room with me. Because so I essentially, am like the Rorschach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going to say, you're giving the Rorschach speech for the, you're in here with me. The moment that my risk quadruples is the moment where I'm like, okay, well, as long as I follow the same safety uh, that I follow at work, then that's really the only controllable thing that I have is my own... How I affect other people is the only thing that I can control. And outside of that, I'll do the limited amount of things that I that I that I want to do, which is not a lot mm. to begin with. I like it. But anyway, that was a big old word vomit, and I'm going to be talking a lot today because it's my topic. So, mm-hmm. And how? Shockingly enough, breaking the cycle yet again. I don't know. Good Michael's old John been poking the poking me. He's been poking me. He's like I. He's like I can't keep doing this. I can't. I can't research. I, I just don't have the time between, you know, being a dad for the first time uh, immaculately. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> I do I it's... do bleach her every night. 
I was going to say, it's the first, you know, virgin father since Joseph of Arimathea, so it's <laughs> oh, Jesus it's Christ. impressive. Exactly! You got it right on the head. <laughs> the, the first time since Jesus Christ. Yes. I've been cucked by God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Don't tell me you've never thought of that. You've never thought of that. <laughs> I, I don't believe in God. <laughs> it was, well, well yeah, duh, but I mean, like... In the context of that, he was like the first cuck. I mean, I, I find being cucked by Zeus as a swan more credible than being cucked by God. So, I mean, we'll just take it where well, you can. Well, uh, multiple, multiple men were cucked by Zeus as a swan. Exactly. I think, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's not every Black day swan. that you stumble onto the title of your own autobiography. <laughs> I was cucked by God. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, if I ever get such an ego as to write an autobiography, I want to label it that for no reason I think whatsoever. There's, there's a Reddit forum that is also <laughs> operating under that handle right now as well. Oh, 100%. If not, can we make that our disinformed subreddit just cucked by God? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Sign me up. Uh, something, uh, something pretty, pretty cool happened this week, uh, since I've last talked to you guys, and that is my circle of friends is tight enough, and I've made my interests so readily known that I had someone invite me on Facebook to the Birds Aren't Real group, and it is just, it has taken all of my energy not just to send every single tens of hundreds of memes that are on that page to you guys, because they are all dynamite, and they're winners. Um, now, is this in comparison to the laugh riot that is Jurassic Park updates? Because you'll forgive me if I am a little incredulous at you claiming that this is dynamite based on your prior history. He's he's got you there. <sighs> yeah, I've never I've never uh, claimed to have amazing taste. I've just claimed to enjoy my own taste. You make music with me. You obviously do not have any taste whatsoever. <laughs> Um, Oof! Funny uh, on the birds aren't real note though. I mentioned this before we started rolling. I saw an Instagram post from them today uh, that they they've made history as of as of this recording. Yes, uh, they have decided to be the first movement uh, to run for president. Uh, they've claimed that uh, a movement is actually, in fact, a person. It can be acknowledged as a person uh so birds aren't real 2020 and you can find that merch now at birds birds aren't real.com they don't need any sponsorship from me in fact mm. uh but anyway I, it made me laugh super hard because it has the president in front of a podium doing his candidacy speech and you see like the different uh, logos on the mics and one of them is pawn stars and so someone commented they're like was pawn stars really there they're like yeah they wanted to cover this historic event yeah, it's reasonable. Good lord. I love it. Well, they got my vote. Not really, but but they have my they have my support and my axe and my interest. Yes. <laughs> um so I just looked it up. There is no subreddit that is cucked by God, so we'll have to get on that. Yeah, <laughs> John as the resident Me? Uh, Reddit. Yes. Oh, I sorry. mean for all of the unsub folks, they're cucked by God. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're feeling spry uh, today. Capital oof. <laughs> yeah. In, Good. Mm. We'll probably need it. Hopefully. Yeah. Not not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. Indeed. There is going to be a lot of Satan today. And how? So it is today, oh. Satan. I don't know if you were trying to to Sigourney segue here. Or if you if you had any other items, I attempted it. Yes, fantastic. Well, today we are going to talk about the Satanic Temple, which we have mentioned way way back on episode two. Uh, mm -hmm. But episode two, if you look, that was Levian Satanism, and this is pretty different. But before I dive into that, Shane, do you want to tell the kind folks who decided to waste hours of their life uh, what we do here? I do indeed. Utilize hours of their lives. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid Get to use educated. that mute. I'm not afraid to use that mute button, Michael. 
I will do it. You can it. mute me all you want. The re- the, you're not muting my recording. Yes, but I I'm saving my silenced. sanity, and that is the reason that I need to do it. <laughs> the interrupting cow will not stand, man. Moo. Move over. So, what we typically tend to do here is we will prevent... <sighs> prevent? Good gracious. We will present <laughs> for your consumption and for your general disapproval... A random or esoteric topic, and in the midst of explaining it to one another, and ostensibly to you as well, we will occasionally lie from time to time. And it is then incumbent upon the co-hosts to suss out the lies, to separate the fact from fiction, and call them out as we see them, as the interlopers that they are. And unfortunately, however, even if we get them right... The points do not matter because no one wins at this podcast. We are all losers, as we have asserted on many occasions. Amen. Losers forever. So, John. Yeah, so... Losers Club. <laughs> Liars Club. So Friars my... Club. Oh, son Dyer's of a Dyers Club. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that shit feels. <laughs> my... Wake up, Sheila! Damn it! Um, that's, that's a clip. That's me God. clipping the mic. Damn um, Michael had sent into Heil, our group chat, slinger. son of a bitch. <laughs> I feel like this is a, a karma moment of every time I've interrupted either of you, culminating to one gigantic <laughs> torpedo of fuck. I would have thought you would have been really excited for my debut of the new phrase, Heil Cumslinger. I thought that would have at least gotten you excited. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll reach out to the the podcast I've been listening to, uh, the Kingslingers podcast, and suggest that they change it to Cumslingers. (laughs) No, it's ours. That is uh, trademarked. Shane Hunt, twenty twenty. Oh, when we uh, when we get a merchandise, you know, uh, you know, t shirts and all that stuff, that'll be one of them. Heil Cumslinger. Yes, all of us in cowboy hats. We will be entitled as Kitten El Dorado (laughs) and company. Oh, oh, you guys man. are just giving me holiday gift ideas. That's all you're doing. Oh, please. <laughs> Thank please. God. I, I would appreciate that. All right, I'm John, please. Give me the sweet Satan. Okay. We are talking about the Satanic Temple. Michael gently requested. He he wanted clarification on an article, and I had seen the same thing and decided that it's something that I actually know a little bit, a tiny bit about, and I think that it's interesting. I derailed us back in the day on episode two to blather about the tenants after we heard the other principles of the church of satan and and just wanted to, to kind of uh talk about who they are and a couple of the activist things that they have done Ooh. so there's there's two lies throughout here i didn't really want to uh throw too many in here but i know that we have to have some uh but without further ado so the Sat- satanic temple is a non-theistic religious group based in the united states I've referred to them kind of like punk rock atheism. Uh, okay. The Satanic Temple believes that religion can and should be divorced from superstition. As such, they do not promote a belief in a personal Satan. To embrace the name Satan is to embrace rational inquiry removed from supernaturalism and archaic tradition-based superstitions. Satanists should actively work to hone critical thinking and exercise reasonable agnosticism in all things. Their beliefs must be malleable to the best current sci- scientific understanding of the material world and never the reverse. So in my opinion, very forward thinking um, logic prevails is, is how mm-hmm. I kind of take that. I can dig it. Um, there's a whole different little subplot that you could follow on how they got their tax exemption, but they are now officially recognized as a church for the purpose of tax exemption. Uh, They have chapters in 16 states, as well as two in Canada, one in the UK, and three in Russia. And their mission is to encourage benevolence. Is is the Russia thing bullshit? Fuck, it is. Oh! Mm. (laughs) I'm like, Russia doesn't allow... Russia doesn't even allow homosexuals. I can't imagine that they will... Look it up. Uh (laughs) Well, does Vidanya don't get any on you. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But All no, right. like they they are very they are, they repress homosexuality very much there. So Damn. I can't imagine them allowing Satanism in there. I did mm-hmm. not expect that uh I didn't expect that to be a like a soft pitch. You know? You nah. just... <laughs> All right, man. Fuck. I think Michael's right, the... a little bit too attuned to the uh, whole Russian front these days, I think. 
I guess I can't. I mean, I for one support our Russian overlords. Um, <laughs> and all of their lizard Oh, lizard so you're a glory. Republican. <laughs> <laughs> you can censor Oof. me, please. Feel free. <laughs> I didn't quite catch what you said because he was talking over you. What did you say, Shane, for everybody at home? I said uh, he must be a Republican. <laughs> I want to censor that just because it's funny. To, it's not even a bad word. It's just a political party. But I almost just want to censor it for shits and giggles. If you if you do uh, censor that, be prepared to face the consequence of your action, which is most likely a second child will just manifest itself in your bathroom and start. Oh goodness, you're right. Uh, Don't shake your stick at that G O P. <laughs> well, <laughs> cool. <laughs> The mission of the Satanic Temple is to encourage benevolence and empathy, reject tyrannical authority, advocate practical common sense, oppose injustice, and undertake noble pursuits. They've publicly confronted hate groups, fought for the abolition of corporal punishment. Abolition? Right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Michael, whenever he looks at me, I just feel like he's trying to imbue me with his, uh, you know, gift of gab. Uh, he's actually just trying to imbue you with his seed, so take it where you will. <laughs> it's hard through this, you know, through the digital medium that we're conversing in, but... Put your nipples away. Anyway, he fought for the abolition of corporal punishment in public schools, applied for equal representation when religious installations are placed on public property, provided religious exemption and legal protection against laws that unscientifically restrict women's reproductive auto- autonomy. Sorry. Exposed harmful pseudoscientific practitioners in mental health care. Organized clubs alongside other religious after-school clubs and schools besieged by proselytizing organizations and engaged in other advocacy in accordance with their tenets. Again, mm. it's punk now, rock atheism to as, me. I like it. I, I can dig it. Is the uh, bit about uh, being against pseudoscience bullshit? It is not. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure we weren't hitting Michael's greatest triggers here before we finished up the episode. <laughs> no, there's no stenographers in my episode. Oh, oh thank man. God. <laughs> Hail Stan. So, just as a... Hail Stan. And how. Uh, just a refresher. Or Hail Stanographer. The... <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's the episode that on my title. Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Stanographer. You yeah, put it on your it. face before you swallow. Uh, a ref- <laughs> a refresher on the seven tenants for those who haven't listened to the second episode um we'll go ahead and go through those real quick so the seven tenants one one should strive to act with compassion and empathy toward all creatures in accordance with reason two the struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions three one's body is inviolable subject to one's own will alone Four, the freedoms of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend. To willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms of another is to forgo one's own. Five, beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific fact to fit one's beliefs. Six, people are fallible. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's best to rectify it and resolve any harm that might have been caused. Seven, Every tenant is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility in action and thought. The spirit of compassion, wisdom, and justice should always prevail over the written or spoken word. Again. I can dig it. It was the second episode we ever recorded, and I said it then and I'll say it now. I agree with every single one of those tenants. Like, I wouldn't change a thing. So, speaking of, and I've mentioned the second episode multiple times, how they've how the Satanic Temple differs from Levian Satanism... <clears throat> And most of this is from uh, the Satanic Temple's own website, is uh, the Satanic Temple has its own guiding principles and tenets distinct from the Levian school that we feel represents a natural evolution in Satanic thought. The overriding principle calls for utilizing the best scientific evidence available to make the most rational real-world decisions. To that end, they reject Levian social Darwinistic rhetoric that fails to agree with what is currently known regarding social evolution, specifically as it relates to research in evolutionary uh, biology, game theory, reciprocal, altruism, cognitive science, etc. Mm. Now, a few of those things I didn't dive down and in, in, in research. Like game theory, I, I need to look up. I'm sure it's ooftastic. 
It's a mm. YouTube channel. No, um, it, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's. I mean, it's it's a psychological aspect. It, I don't know. It's not something that's like super complicated. As long as someone can describe it in a way that it's not me, but it's okay. game theory is a legitimate like study. It's not like board games or something like that. It's yeah. Well, the idea is we talked about it in the. <laughs> I wasn't going to hear it at all. In the uh, Levain Satanism episode, we did mention essentially the idea is is that if you can exploit another individual to your benefit, they almost encourage you to do so. And that's where the, the social Darwinism occurs, is that if you are smart enough to connive somebody, you're entitled to it, almost. And that doesn't quite stay in keeping with what they were saying there, which, uh, you know, they're attempting to be altruistic and understand, again, you're hurting somebody else with your own opinion and things like that. So it, it is a much more enlightened principle from their perspective than LaVey's, which was very sort of hedonistic and to thine own self be true versus they're saying we all ha have to have a cohesive world here. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I just I thought it would be interesting to put together. And that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you wrapping that up. Um, I don't remember. I don't think we we're doing the podcast when I saw the documentary originally, but all of my initial interest and knowledge of uh, the Satanic Temple came from the documentary called Hail Satan. Um, if you haven't watched it, whether you two guys or any of you listening, last I checked, it's available for streaming on Hulu. It's a roughly 90 minute watch. Most of what I've talked about and the next little section, they talk a great length about in the documentary. And it's not a, it's not a bad, it's not a bad run. It's a pretty, pretty fun watch for the most part. Very interesting for sure. Um, cool. So what I want to do is I want to talk about a couple of their activism movements. Uh, so I have two in particular, and we'll start with the Statue of Baphomet. Uh, oh, <laughs> gasp. Uh, Shane, did it come can, to them in a dream? Yes, it did. <laughs> Shane, can you uh, describe uh, what you what Baphomet looks like to you? Well, Baphomet is described as being a sabbatic goat. Uh, so the, the sigil is essentially a goat's head with horns that are very sort of uh, uplifted and rounded. So let's look at the statue of Baphomet. Um, so it's a bronze sculpture commissioned by the Satanic Temple depicting the goat-headed winged symbol of the occult. First unveiled in Detroit in 2015... <laughs> First unveiled in Detroit in 2015, the statue stands... 8.5 feet tall and features a prominent pentagram mm. as well as two smiling youths gazing up at the seated central figure. Uh, I would recommend like Google image search that. It's a pretty dope statue. Very satanic. It's also um, it's featured in the current run of Sabrina, is it not? Yes. Yes, it is. That, there was like a, a fun little lawsuit that happened then they got the rights to use it. or they, mm -hmm. I think they used it without permission and then the satanic temple yes. was like, yo, that's fucked up. And they're like, oh, sorry, can can we use it? And they're like, yeah, hail Satan. We're not Levain Satanists. We don't want you to just steal it from us. We, you know, we're the just satanic ask, temple. Yeah. We want to share with you. I just yeah. want to get a little, you know, remuneration for it. Yeah, just let us know, please. Like, right. Thanks. Uh, so public display of the piece or the mere suggestion of its display has been a key element of the satanic temple's actions advocating the separation of church and state. So they began an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign in 2014 to create a satanic monument depicting Baphomet and two children with the intention to display this monument at the Oklahoma State Capitol. Mm. So okay. what I've done now is we kind of look at both Oklahoma and then it'll be Arkansas. But the Ten Commandments monument authorized by the Oklahoma legislature and approved by the governor in 2009 was installed on the grounds of the Oklahoma State Capitol uh, in 2012. The mere concept engendered years of political, <laughs> yeah, uh, engendered years of political controversy, court suits based on religious freedoms of religious issues, destruction in 2014 by a man who drove his car into it, uh, replacement in the same location, and even attempts to remove Supreme Court justices who ruled in 2014 that the monument must be removed to another site. Wow. Um, after the governor at the time. Uh, key legislators and the justices agreed on a substitution site, the monument was removed from the Capitol grounds in 2015 and stored in Fort Knox. 
the Baphomet statue was also displayed. Is is the Fort Knox bullshit? That is also bullshit. <laughs> I'm like, Fort Knox has money and stuff. Why the why the fuck are they storing a Ten Commandments statue? <laughs> it's not made of actual gold, but <laughs> I like gold. Hey, wow, so, please, so, no. so I I I won today. Yeah, you won. How do you feel? Huh. Um the same. Yeah. Like, yeah, points don't death matter, is my all friend. Approaching. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, at least you know the Paxel works. Yes. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Uh, I like when I get Shane to do the the head turn self laughter. I feel like yeah, that's the, yeah. the best kind of Shane laugh. Paxel Jackson <laughs> over here doing the spoon walk. Uh, all right, sorry for the low blow there, Mister Seaman. Goodness gracious! Uh, so the Batman statue is also displayed on a flatbed. Ooh, well, we can oh, actually use it. his uh, given. We can actually use his given Christian name with the new last name. So it is Peener Seaman. <laughs> the Baphomet statue was also displayed on a flatbed truck parked in front of the Arkansas State Capitol building for several hours on August 16th, 2018, for an event organized in protest of the Ten Commandments monument on the Arkansas Capitol grounds. So, after a formal request to install Baphomet was refused in violation of the right to equal protection, Satanic Temple members were granted legal standing to challenge the Ten Commandment Monument. Ooh. This is the focal point of the documentary that I was talking about, Hail Satan. Uh, seriously, it's good stuff. It's it's basically the climactic point in the in the documentary is, is the flatbed and everything leading up to it. Spoilers. Uh, having their spokesperson and founder, like, having to get dressed up in, like, a bulletproof vest because there was legitimate threats happening. Like, pretty crazy shit. Fair. The main thing that they drive home, or the main takeaway that I've gotten from how they approach their causes is pluralism. Uh, so being like a condition uh, in which two or more states, groups, principles, sources of authority, etc., they, they just coexist. So it's fine if on a state ground you want to throw up the Ten Commandments. But what that means in turn is that every other organization kind of has a right for a representation of their symbol. It's the same argument that you get for individuals who want to speak creationism and evolution in a classroom, that both need to be represented. This same functional representation needs to be available elsewhere. Yeah, I actually, that was a perfect example. I was going to say that there's a lot of parallels between this and Pastafarianism. The only downside to the Pastafarianism is it still hasn't been recognized as a legitimate religion. Uh unlike the satanic temple well because so. you know the satanic temple is still based on christian you know mythology yeah. or theology so that's easier to swallow than mm -hmm. pasta <laughs> one would argue pasta is easier to swallow but i couldn't agree more <laughs> exactly um i could probably there's so much like if you look at just on their wikipedia alone like the for the satanic temple the amount of um amount of things that they've gotten involved in and stepped into to kind of spread that idea uh it's a big list to pull from but i decided the only other one that i would talk about tonight just to keep the episode shorter um would be in relation to what michael had sent me an article for which is and if i had the cue i'd send it to you michael if, if i could find a royalty free one i have a note here that says cue metal breakdown uh satanic abortions or q anon <laughs> Oh, uh, no. <laughs> don't. You're going to try to make me say something problematic on air, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> seriously, bro. Speaking of satanic children eaters. Anyway. <laughs> Lizard people. Go. Like uh, the Dutch. <laughs> two kinds of people I hate, man. You got the second one. I love that that's the quote Michael has. On the entire <laughs> wheelhouse of our cinematic understanding and illusions... Michael gets Austin Powers references and Nay also quoted Goldmember earlier in this episode. <laughs> I feel like you could probably quote any movie that's gotten a Razzie award and Michael would be on fucking top of it. Wait, no, wait, hating the Dutch. I thought that was a I thought that was a Monty Python. No. Shut your mouth, sugar. Oh. <laughs> well, shit. Not my Jesus. <laughs> Whoopsies. So <sighs> Satanic abortions. So, in accordance with the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, 
First trimester abortions are now exempt from unnecessary regulations for all individuals practicing the Satanic Temple's religious abortion ritual, which oh. is big news. So I didn't know what the uh, the, ac- the acronym for the, the, the act is RFRA. I didn't really know what that was. So if you guys want a definition of it, I have it pulled directly from... I have a summary directly pulled from the legislature, or like from the act. Please. Um, so... This was passed, and obviously since amended multiple times, but originally passed in 93. Um, The Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993 prohibits any agency, department, or official of the United States or any state, parenthetical, the government, from substantially burdening a person's exercise of religion, even if the burden results from a rule of general applicability, except that the government may burden a person's exercise of religion only if it demonstrates that application of the burden to the person. So essentially, it's it's just a religious freedom bill. Um, okay. And a religious freedom bill is a bill that, according to its proponents, allows those with religious objections to oppose, usually, um, you know, LGBTQA... I'm missing something at the end. Z. Uh, I think uh, it might be, it might just be plus at that point. I think it's plus. Uh, th- obviously, I pulled this prior to the addition here, so it's not me trying to be an asshole on purpose. Um, That's my job. Usually targets that group in accordance with traditional religious teaching, teachings without being punished by the government for doing so. So something that gets brought up a lot in relation to the Satanic Temple's action, it's kind of their response to the Hobby Lobby precedent, mm-hmm. you know, where... Hobby Lobby was being very restrictive of their employees citing because they were a religious company or a religiously owned company that they had the right to, you know, restrict, which is fucking horseshit. So a lot of this is directly from the Satanic Temple. The Chick-fil-A principle as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, So the Satanic abortion ritual provides spiritual comfort and affirms bodily autonomy, self-worth, and freedom for coercive forces with the affirmation of the seven tenets of the satanic temple the ritual is not intended to convince a person to have an abortion instead it sanctifies the abortion process by instilling confidence and protecting bodily rights when undergoing the safe and scientific procedure so again acting very in accordance with with what they've established and not really shying away from it uh the religious freedom ensures sat- or satanists have access to safe abortions that are free from unwarranted state interference so here are some examples of requirements that cannot be enforced on Satanic Temple members. Mandatory waiting periods, the requirement that practitioners withhold certain medical information, compulsory counseling prior to abortion, required reading materials, medically unnecessary sonograms, mandatory listening to the fetal heartbeat, and compulsory burial or cremation of fetal remains. Wow, that's a lot. I think that's pretty much all the extra rules that have been tacked on to a lot of other, a lot of states in the past. That's it's, awesome. It's a big deal. And again, because they're acknowledged as a religious organization now, this is again another like another fight for the that pluralistic viewpoint. Um, I think I accidentally just bit bit off my next. Section. The the nice thing about this is is that it does not allow them. This sort of, uh, it allows them to be painted with the same brush, whereas they will claim that people are sort of castigating them based on their religious viewpoints and that religion should be protected and sacred. And yet, at the same time, throws the hypocrisy into that as as long as it is my religion, not your religion, then that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah. Yeah. It's great. I love it. I, I, honestly love it when people call other people out on bullshit on their bullshit like that kind of kind of like this show um where it's like no if you're saying you know freedom for for religion you know to practice however we want like that involves my religion too it's not just oh yeah anyone can practice their religion as long as it's mine it's no no you're gonna do that everyone can i love it i honestly i really fucking love it yeah and I've purposely tried it's the idea to... of inclusivity, basically. Exactly. I I made an actual concerted effort on when I was putting together uh, this topic, not to slander other religions in the process. 
Um, That's fair. That goes along a lot with their tenants. All we're doing right now is just looking at what they're doing, whether or not you agree or disagree. This is what they're doing. My personal opinion, and I, I feel like I'm in a room of kindred spirits here. I agree with what they're putting forward, and I think what they're doing has a lot of value, whether or not, whether or not you're you're theistic or not. I think it has a lot of value in protection or in protecting your rights as a, as a spiritual person or non spiritual. Well, I would say that you have not knocked anyone's religion at all. You have not. You have knocked on people's exercising their right to do whatever they want under the guise of religion but you've not knocked on any specific religion their own you've you've knocked on people not the religion itself i think the salient point here as well is also when you point out the number of hurdles the sheer volume of attempts that have been made to curb people's natural governmentally granted rights via the you know avenue of religion because when you're looking at all these sort of regulatory things that have been pushed onto the abortive practice almost primarily or if not exclusively because of a commonly held religious belief versus a scientific principle so if you're talking about you're worried about the health of the mother and that's what they're attempting to educate but like the talk of uh, forcing someone to listen to the fetal heartbeat if that is not, you know, functioning under the guise of peer pressure of anything, I don't know something else that's similar or the, uh, you know, intention of other instances where folks have attempted to sort of therapy out, the, you know, chastise the gay away and things like this. Right. There's not that occurring in other instances. So I don't think it's not necessarily saying that if you believe in God, this is the condemnatory action here is just saying you can't try to force the world into your perspective. That's not how we function these days. We're trying to let everybody flourish in the same way, and it would be prejudicial to do otherwise. And so for those who are claiming they're being impinged upon, they're actually, in many instances, the individuals trying to control others. Right. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Great. So this very eloquent. Yeah, this isn't in my presentation or, or the topic rather, but I have it Bullshit. pulled up. <laughs> I have it pulled up as a secondary tab in case you wanted to hear it. But I did pull up the uh, the satanic ritual for abortion, like what you need to do. Did you guys want to want to hear what they wrote on how to perform a satanic abortion? Absolutely. Sure. All yeah. right. I'm glad you said yes. It's strictly educational. Yes. Yes. So. From their website, for surgical abortions, prior to receiving any aesthetic or sedation, look at your reflection to be reminded of your personhood and your responsibility to yourself. Focus on your intent. Take deep breaths and make yourself comfortable. When you're ready, say the third tenet and fifth tenet aloud. You may now undergo the surgery. After the surgery is completed and any anesthetic has worn off, Return to your reflection and recite your personal affirmation. Feel doubts dissipating and your confidence growing as you've just undertaken a decision that affirms your autonomy and free will. The religious abortion ritual is now complete. I like it. Steady applause. Yes. The yes. medical one is very, very closely worded to the same thing. And then just for a, uh, a quick reminder, the third tenant, one's body is inviolable. Inviolable? <laughs> yeah. My mic Inviolable? Is there we go. Uh, subject to one's own will alone. And five, beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. Uh, one should never, or one should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's beliefs. So, felt like that was a, uh, just the wording is, is clever in multiple ways. One, I just think it's very uh, empathetic to someone's situation that you don't know what they're going through mentally when they, because mm. everyone assumes, or I think there's a general assumption that it's just a callous, you know, just, oh, willy-nilly, I'll just abort it today. But it's a big decision, and one that you, uh, n none of us are <laughs> ever going to be qualified to talk on ad nauseum. But yeah, I, right. I feel how they worded it uh, is clever in the way of being empathetic, and also to comply with religious protection acts and religious freedom laws. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So this is from, I'll go ahead. I had an interesting bit because I've been not being Michael and like you, I've been watching movies. So I finally caught up on several of the films that I had hoped to watch fairly recently. One of which being A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, oh. which if neither of you have seen, 
I would very strongly recommend. But there is a beautiful moment that we get towards kind of the crescendo of the film where they have an exchange with the primary character that you're following, the every person, and Mr. Rogers, as essayed by Tom Hanks. And it's brilliantly done in the way that they configured the script, but it's a lovely moment where um, the main character is having difficulty with his father, who he has a strained relationship with. That's not spoilers, just that's kind of the conceit of the film. And Mr. Rogers takes a moment and stops. He says, I just want to have a minute where we can sit and just think of the people who have loved us into existence. Wow. And he said, your father, through even his inaction or the things that he did that you may have seen as being sort of cruel to you, has helped to mold you into who you are presently. And you wouldn't be the same person you are without these things having happened. So let's just take a minute, and I'll look at my clock here, and uh, let's just have a moment, and we'll pause and reflect on the people who have loved us into existence. And then in the film, they pan around the room, and it is individuals who are actually... Um, like Fred Rogers' family, his wife is there. The individuals who were critical in making the show, like the producers, the gentleman who played the uh, Mr. McFeely, the speedy delivery man, like they float and actually show people from his own life that were essential in creating him. And it is just a moment of one minute of dead silence for the film. And the last 30 seconds of it essentially is just Tom Hanks staring dead into the camera and looking at you and you just get to sit and have your own moment of quiet contemplation about the people who have actually helped to make you be loved into insistence really beautiful and talk about transformative experiences in the cinema and what film can do nice was one of my favorite things that i have encountered in a good long while and somewhat tantamount to what we're talking about here and so i felt it was somewhat appropriate given what we're talking about and Absolutely. It, yeah. similar a great movie i would I'll absolutely it recommend it i i cried through most of it i would expect nothing less Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I will definitely check that out. Um, I've before we get back and I, you know, finish. I only have a, a couple couple little things left, but uh, my rewatch lately, I've been I've been working through watching my very condensed uh, Blu-ray shelf A to Z to see if there's anything I just need to throw away or like donate rather um, things that don't make the cut anymore, but. My biggest decompression, especially with being in a new hellscape at work, my Venture Brothers rewatch is the amount of levity that I, I need to get through my every day now to the point where I'm like, Becky, I know this isn't your show at all. But like <clears throat> when I get home from work, if I'm like trying to get ready for bed, like two episodes back to back, like it turns my brain off in a way that I haven't really encountered from a show in a good way. Not like mindless because there are yes. some sharp jokes. Yeah, it's a healthy blend of toilet humor and actual like intellectual humor. So but I will check out. It's a great show. I will check out a beautiful day in the neighborhood because it did catch my eye, and I think it's going to be the kind of, to your point, like the, the kind of movie that you need uh, during this time. Yes, it was a palate cleanser for me as well because I had just watched prior to that the Eastwood film Richard Jewell. Oh damn! And particularly given what's happening with the you know the government presently and uh, people's rights being violated, that that film is a harsh eye opener. So it was a very wonderful yeah. cleanse of the palate to get Mister Rogers and the saccharine. Let's all understand each other and treat everybody as though they're sacred and beautiful. It was a really nice sort of contrast oh, for sure. Um, so let's let's wrap this up. Uh, the topic itself. Uh, what I have. Uh, Next is the Satanic Temple's uh, their own statement on their next steps now that they've they've gotten this far uh, with the process. So they say we have no plans or intent to sue a clinic for not respecting our rights unless they defy a court order demanding that they honor our exemption requests. We understand that clinics must adhere to the law and that they are in a difficult situation when laws conflict. Instead, we will challenge states that fail to enforce their RFRA laws and thereby exempt TST members from unnecessary abortion restrictions. If your religious exemption requests are denied when seeking to perform the satanic abortion ritual, immediately contact the Satanic Temple at rrr at thesatanictemple.com with your name and phone number to start the next steps of resolving the situation and deciding whether to take legal action. Wow. That's awesome. So it's, I like that they're in the same breath being like, we get the Advo we, advocacy in action. Exactly. 
Yeah. Um, so to tie all this together, Michael sent me the article from Rolling Stones about this. I'm a member of the Satanic Temple. I'm not card carrying because I just didn't want to spend the money. But it's it's a free membership if you if you want to get notifications on what they're doing, um, or if you want to get involved with your local chapter, uh, which we do have a local chapter here in Arizona. They've done a lot of cleanup projects. There's a whole different lane that you can Ooh. look into about how they wanted to uh, uh, just look up Satanic Temple Scottsdale. There's been some advocacy action done in our own backyard. Um, but dope. And then it all plays directly to pluralism like we're talking about. Shane, you're, you you have a question? It makes me think of, since I'm reading through Game of Thrones presently, and Michael will appreciate this because George Martin references are not lost on him. Uh, Occasionally. Religion to me feels like more of, I don't want it to be, when I was raised, the sort of one of the Christian ethos is, is no other gods before me. And you want it to be sort of exclusionary of don't dabble out into these other things. And to me, the more that I've floated around in life and the more that I hear other the tenets of other faiths and other people's perspectives, I want to consider it to be like a maester's chain of mm. I've grabbed this sort of ethos from this group and this from another. And like as much as I do enjoy Pastafarianism, I think joining the Satanic Temple and adding another link to my chain would be a, a brilliant way to, to move forward in just showing you want to be open-minded and understanding and, you know, grasp everybody's perspectives before you make your own decisions, which is a really pleasant thought. So that was my thought. It was just, a, you know, it's a wonderful link to put in your chain. Join the Satanic Temple. Do it now. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Um, so the article that Michael sent... Uh, from Rolling Stone, will wrap up this perfectly. It's just a little paragraph or a sentence or two. In other words, the Satanic Temple is taking the Christian rights crusade for religious liberty seriously and saying that if it's good for Christianity, it has to be good for everyone. It's only a matter of time before the Supreme Court answers the question whether they actually believe in religious liberty for all. Mm, because Brilliant. That's because tasty. again, like I'm not going to... I'm not deep diving. This isn't the kind of podcast that we are where we're going to spend two hours and three episodes dissecting everything. And uh, Was that a jab? Yes, Michael, it was. Um, <laughs> oh. Because there, there is a lot of things going on in the background now, especially with satanic abortion. As you can imagine, just by calling it that, you're already getting uh, a rallying cry from, from the opposition just wanting to kill anything from tst literally and figuratively um yes but yeah so that's a brief overview of the satanic temple that's a couple of the uh activism well projects they've been involved in and uh i'll say it's mainly why i love the term that uh, last podcast on the left uh made and got me hip too which is hail yourself which is basically what satanic temple is about being true to your own values, having an anchor to, to, to lean towards. And again, like I'm not super theistic. So having a, a non-theistic group where if I did want to get involved in something and have a community in the same way that other religious groups have, it's a very, very easy outlet. And again, it's not literal Satan, not literal. What? Not church, not church of Satan or any of that nonsense. Bullshit. It's literally Satan. But also the fact that you have to be sort of incendiary like that, it proves that you have something to rail against. And again, I'm sorry, you came in without an agenda, but as someone who tilts at this windmill far too often, uh, <laughs> I have not heard of any other religious belief where they have gone around and attempted to eradicate any other individuals who had a different perspective, primarily. Right. I mean, unless you're counting the Huns, maybe. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, it just, yeah. And speaking of which, uh, to tie this up in a beautiful little bow as well, superfan Steven <gasps> sent us a glorious Steven. video of a woman who was pointing out that she believes, through all of her religious study, that monster energy drinks are endorsing the Black Mass and Antichrist and, uh, the you know, the idea of the Church of Satan as well. And we will include that video. There's a glorious little YouTube link of her explaining why Monster is satanic. <laughs> and you will appreciate that. But we all watched it this week, and it was vastly entertaining. So thank you for that, Stephen. Yes, thank you. Stephen. Um, also speaking of YouTube, 
don't forget to tune in every Friday to our Disinformed After Dark video podcast where we uh, chat with each other and look at what Chuck Klosterman's hypotheticals have us debate uh, while our files compress and send to our glorious editor michael uh when you said compress i thought depress and i just thought files just being like nothing mm. matters uh, uh, and I'm just speaking like, in equal measure the rickman character <laughs> speaking in equal measure of depression <laughs> compression and editing uh michael do you, you have an announcement to make about you have an announcement uh, to make oh <laughs> I was like, the fuck are you talking about? Um, yes, so by this time, the listener, yes, you, when you're listening to this, hopefully on Monday morning, but if not, no judgment here, um, The my immortal reading, just the reading, no other fluff, will be available on Bandcamp. Saucy. Yes. Mm-hmm. With, a, with a new intro and outro, right? Yes. Yes, uh, which uh, I uh, painstakingly crafted by stealing from great cinema. But uh, <laughs> to your credit, Michael, I listened back through the first seven or eight chapters while I was at work and I was uploading the files, and it sounds like a dyed in the wool, uh, you know, sure to fur actual audiobook now that you have edited everything out. All of our commentary and our chortling laughter at most of the misspellings and nonsense. It does sound fairly coherent, or as coherent as that nonsense does. <laughs> but I remember <laughs> as we do start delving deeper into madness as the episodes or the chapters began to move on. So I'm in excited to see where this is going to start manifesting in the later chapters. Michael, also, since you've been editing, do you, off the top of your head, uh, the, the, the length, do you... Well, how how long is it? It's 15 tracks by the time we actually get everything on there and uploaded, which is probably going to be a bit over an hour, I think. It's only an hour? Uh, each... No, no, no. It's 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 longer than that. Each episode itself, I think, runs between 8 uh, to, I think, the maximum. The last one is 20-ish minutes. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at at least two and a half, maybe even three hours for wow. the whole thing. Someone's whole life so. only took two and a half hours to read. I was trying to soft sell this, Michael. Nope. <laughs> if, if honestly, if you want to put the effort into listening to the uh, to the audio book itself, then uh, you, you got to be you know, ready for the long haul here. So. It's really not as bad as you think it is, honestly, having listened to it just coming back. And granted, we have a bit of a bias here, but it does, it flows a lot faster. And then chapter on chapter makes a bit more sense when you can hear it all in context, because otherwise, yes, remember, we were doing these with a full week in between and you barely remembered who you were, let alone who the characters were. It, it works a lot better in the audiobook format. I will agree. Most certainly, and especially because you don't need a previously on that we did as a reoccurring theme for the last, uh, I don't know, 10-ish yeah. uh, mm. episodes that we were doing. Um, you don't need that, especially if you're sitting down and doing like, it's, it would be like the length of a, a decently long movie. But it, I tried shortening all the dead air so that, you know, if someone says something, some, Shane immediately says, you know, that person said. So there's no like awkward silences. And then I cut also dead air so that if it's a fast paced you know scene there's going to be no there's going to be a lot less gaps between or if it's a you know lackadaisical then you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Yes. i tried making it as, as thematic okay. as possible you did a wonderful job thank you i appreciate it i have had ze i i tried one winter break five six years ago to get into audiobooks and i failed so the fact that it sounds like an audiobook is a compliment thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he, boy you're boy, well howdy. dead air to fix since, my friend yeah ah, it's a living since we caught the lies in situ i don't feel like they're well, I, we since michael caught the lies this week and i was just engaged in what john was saying we don't really have to do the the denouement here to get us to the end of the episode <laughs> so I think it's uh, easy enough. John, do you have anything that you feel you need to impart before we wrap everything up in a beautiful little bow? Um, Hail Stan, birds aren't real. Michael's new name is Mr. Seaman. Um, and I Keener will present Seaman. the topic again when I feel compelled to. And thank you guys for giving me a platform to talk about my own nonsense. Well, bless you.
as always. Uh, yes, Peener Siemens is now officially a, a brand new character here. Known to be in a, an open relationship with Galrilla Godot. Oh, I'll take oh. that. I know you would. 10%. Yeah, I probably have. You like him fuzzy. And with a necklace full of arms, but that's neither high here nor there, so. Who hasn't lusted after Daryl from time to time? I mean, everybody likes body parts on a necklace. <laughs> he doesn't Well. Get it. That's a Walking Dead reference, isn't it? Yes, welcome to the party. Ah! Aha! Well, uh, ladies and germaphobes, we sincerely appreciate you being here. As per usual, thank you for tuning in, and uh, please continue to do so. Otherwise, you know, you never know what will happen to us. We might just further deteriorate mentally, which would be very problematic for some of us. If you want to hang Way out with you. us, you can check us out on all of the social networking platforms that you prefer. If you find us on Instagram, we are at Disinformed Podcast. We are at Facebook.com slash Disinformed Podcast. And on the Twitters, at Disinformed Pod. You can find this glorious little podcast everywhere that disreputable podcasts are distributed. Of course, you've probably found us there already if you are listening to this. And furthermore, as John said earlier, but just to reinforce, every Friday, 10 a.m., mountain time you can find disinformed after dark on the tubes of you please do so because they are a lot of fun and uh, i hope that you all enjoyed our talk of pork and a hobo from last friday because it was <laughs> splendid and how all right gentlemen let's cast this thing off the the bow and uh, hope that it drowns deep in the ocean for the disinformed podcast i'm shane i'm john and i'm michael so long and good night so long and good night <laughs> <laughs>